Uh, yes, but first, wildlife mil uh, filmmaker and artist Robert Fuller has his hands full with some newborns of his own. I've always been fascinated by the natural world, and I've spent the last 30 years documenting the comings and goings of the wildlife around me. And it's not just about capturing their world on camera. I'm also on hand to help them when they need it. I've had a call this morning. Someone's found a baby stoat in the garden. Her eyes are just opening, which indicates she's about four weeks old, maybe five weeks, but she's quite small for that age. I can tell when I pinch her skin, it doesn't fold back into place straight away. This is a common sign of dehydration, so I'm giving her some puppy milk. She needs to be fed by syringe 10 times a day. It's a gradual process. Too much milk too quickly can flood her lungs. So that's amazing, she hasn't spilled a drop. She's had a first syringe and she still actually wants more. She's actually trying to suckle off my finger now. The fact she's feeding is a good sign, but I need to make sure she's putting on weight too. Over the next few days, I'll take her everywhere with me so I can do regular feeds. This is a really tricky job, syringe feeding this little stout while keeping an eye on all these cameras, waiting for the kingfisher to come. A week later, her fur is thickened and her eyes are fully open. So this little stout kit is really doing well and it's going to be ready for its next stage now, which is going into a bigger enclosure. Just as she's getting settled, I've had another rescued stoat come in. Kits can sometimes be lost as the mother moves them between nests. So the lady's had this and has been raising it from a little kit, and she's done a pretty good job. But she's given it to me for the next stage of rehabilitation, which is eventually getting this little stoat back into the wild. This one's been sleeping in a woolly hat. I'll keep it in that to help the kit settle faster. The two stoats will be kept in separate pens close by so they can get used to each other's scent because I'm hoping they'll move in together. The next day, it's time for them to be introduced. So I think this one knows something's going on. It started calling a lot, squeaking away. Sounds a bit like a cuddly toy, doesn't it? <laughs> this is gonna be a fascinating moment. See what these two do. After some nervous sniffing and squeaking, the kits are playing together like old friends. Ultimately, these kits will be returned to the wild. To get them ready for that, I'm moving them to an outdoor enclosure. And they'll be joined by another stoat that will be nursing back to health. The enclosure is rigged with cameras, so I can capture footage of them exploring, playing, and snuggling down in the nest chamber. And I've got an ingenious way for the stoats to get even closer to the wild. A secret hatch leads to an underground chamber that I built for a family of rescued badgers a few years ago. The badgers have since moved on, so it's the perfect place for the stoats to explore the network of tunnels and passageways. And what they don't know yet is the final doorway opens up to the great outdoors. So today's a really exciting day. I'm going to open up the grills here and let these stoats out. So all I've got to do now is to pop another camera here so I can see their first ventures out into the wild. After three months in my care, they're ready for their next adventure. Well, oh, thank you very how much, cute Rob. are they? You love them, don't you? I would have, I would have looked after those little yeah? baby well, ones. You, get, you should get a couple. Kids will love them. You are like, nah, I'm all right, I've got enough, <laughs> got enough going I on in my know, house. I am thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, let's welcome tonight's guests. Between them, they've got the weekend's TV covered for us from Call the Midwife, Laura Main and Helen George, plus from Bridge of Lies, Ross Kemp. Evening, evening. evening. Yeah. Good to see you all. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, Helen, I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. Now, are you a big wildlife fan? Because <laughs> you've got two beautiful names for your, for your daughters, Lark and Wren. Yeah. I mean, birds' names, I was, I was told today. Yeah, uh, so my first daughter was born in the autumn and she's got beautiful red hair and she just looked like this tiny little autumnal bird when she was born. Oh. So we went with Wren. And then often Wren and Lark are put together in literature, so we kind of carried on with the theme. But I think that's... 
that's done now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. 